What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Obviously you gotta start with the flex. We have Valentina back here. So happy to be back here with you guys. We are going to be doing the if it fits your macros slash flexible dieting versus a meal plan video. We did ask you guys in our two girls and one Pazuki video if you guys would be interested and lots of you guys requested for it to go up so here we go. And just so you guys know we are doing the 10k, 15k um, food challenge right now, so we're gonna be eating at the same time because it's six o'clock and we gotta get it done by yeah. midnight. <laughs> um, and if we seem a little slow, it's because the food is literally just getting to our head. Just don't do it. Yeah, that's, don't do that's it. my word of advice. Just stay tuned for the video and you'll see exactly why we say that. Yeah. But anyways, in this video, we are going to cover what the two different styles are, what the benefits are, what the cons are, which one's better for fat loss or muscle gain. So be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end as we go through through all of this information. So let's just jump right into this video. I hope you guys enjoy it and let's do it. Let's go. So first question is, what is if it fits your macros slash flexible dieting versus a meal plan? Like what are these two different styles that we keep talking about? You can start and explain your The style. first thing I wanna say is honestly, there isn't a big difference besides the fact that a meal plan is very structured. You get a meal plan, whereas with flexible dieting, you have more room to play around with your macros. You can create your own meal plan essentially and you have the option to switch up the foods that you want to eat and you just have more flexibility like the diet approach is called. And with flexible dieting as well your coach will provide you with a certain amount of carbohydrates to eat per day, um, protein, fats, so your macronutrients and it's up to you how you want to hit those macros so that's essentially what flexible dieting is. It's just basically having more flexibility in your diet and not having to follow a strict set plan. Meal plan, pretty straightforward. You get a meal plan. It'll tell you how much of a certain protein, how much of a certain carb or fat your coach wants you to have. And it's usually spread out through five to six meals a day. And like I said, it's just pretty straightforward. It tells you exactly what to eat, how much to eat, and that's it. That's literally a meal plan. So those are the two styles that we're gonna be talking about. For you guys who don't know, I follow a meal plan all year round, whether it's on season or off season. Valentina, on the other hand, follows flexible dieting year round. However, we have both tried each other's techniques. First prep was a set meal plan. I stuck through it for a whole, I think like 20 weeks and I definitely can say that flexible dieting has been the best approach for me, for sure. And then for myself, I tried flexible dieting, um, I wanna say like three years ago for, for like honestly like a month or so. So I don't have too much knowledge like she would I'd definitely say it was nice to have that flexibility more options so we'll definitely get more into that as we go through the questions all right so second question who would benefit from which style of dieting personally i think it all depends on your goals on how set you are on your goals how focused you are because if you are following flexible dieting and you're very determined to hit those goals and get there, you will just stick to your macros no matter what. That being said, sometimes when you have a certain time frame that you have to hit those goals and you're trying to get to a certain body fat, you definitely want to stick to a certain kinds of foods. You don't want to have too much flexibility in your diet just because the consistency can be a little bit off. So it all depends on what your goals are essentially and what you're trying to achieve long term. For a competitor, it works. Flexible dieting definitely works, but like as the closer that you get to show day, the more strict that you have to become with your diet just because you want to be as consistent as possible. You want to be eating foods that are not only going to benefit your body, but your performance in the gym. And you just kind of have to like go off the satisfaction of food and focus more on like achieving what, the goals. Yeah. yeah. Another thing is it depends on your lifestyle. You know, some people don't have time to be thinking of their meals every single, you know, every single time it's time to eat. And some people just really need that, okay, this is what I eat all day, every day, from Monday through Friday, do meal prep on Sunday, and get them all prepped in a container. And that's just what's best for their lifestyle. So someone that's, for example, maybe a nurse or something like that, like just doesn't have time to be playing around with numbers, looking at food labels all the time and stuff like that. So that's another thing that it depends on. Actually someone who is at home all the time, so someone like myself and Valentina, yeah. we work from home, so it's a little bit easier easier to do flexible dieting just because we have that time to you know get creative and really like look at our labels and make sure play that with it fits. the numbers yeah play with the numbers and stuff like that so it'd be something fine to do if you're like a stay-at-home mom or someone like us or I think experience is a huge one too like yeah. make, making sure that you know exactly what macronutrients are because a lot of people actually aren't aware of like what a carb is or like what a protein is and with flexible dieting you definitely have to be aware of what is what 
But that being said, like if you do just get into it and you take your time and you kind of pay attention to what you're doing, you'll get more familiar with it as you go. So it all depends on like, yeah, it depends on you. Yeah, like how you- At the end you, of the day, yeah. it depends on you. <laughs> yeah, like how you feel. Like honestly, when I was on a meal plan, I could probably stick to a meal plan still and be fine with it. I did it during my prep last year too, just because I wanted to show people um, what kind of progress I would make if I was in a meal plan opposed to a flexible dining approach. And I just based my meal plan off of my macros that my coach gave me and I progressed exactly the same. So like we said, it just depends, depends on, on you. you. For me, when I was doing flexible dieting, and I've tried to do it a few times during this off season, I just get too excited with the flexibility, and I get too overwhelmed with all the options I have, and I go get all these groceries and stuff, forget about and, micronutrients. and I forget about micronutrients, and I'm so focused on like, oh, I can fit this cereal, I can fit this, I can fit that, and then it's just too overwhelming, and then I end up overeating, or just not tracking. <laughs> For me, it's just not something I can do. I just can't stay consistent on it. But whenever I get that meal plan and I know exactly what to have, I can just stick to it to a T, which is why I do that approach year round. So I hope that answers the question of who it really benefits. I hope you guys really got the idea that it depends on, on you, you yeah. and your lifestyle and you know what just what you would prefer based on you know, what goes around in your life. As someone who's done both, I can definitely say that the best way to figure out what would work best for you just is just try trying, trying them both. Like, mm -hmm. see what you feel best with. Like, unless you have like a certain time to compete or a specific day that you have to meet the school by, there is no rush. So take your time, figure out what works best for you because that's how you're gonna set yourself up for success. All right, next question is, <clears throat> what are the pros and cons of both? So, we will start with the pros for flexible dieting, and then the pros for meal plan, and then the cons, flexible dieting, cons for meal plan. Pros of flexible dieting, I would say the flexibility you get, the fact that you have a choice, the fact that even if you are prepping and you're still trying to stick to very safe foods, if you're craving something, you have the option to just have that instead of feeling like you're restricted and having the urge to like binge or cheat on your diet. It kind of takes off that mentality of cheating because no food is good or bad, if that makes sense. I think that's like one of the biggest pros. Yeah, um, no, for sure. The fact that you can eat out. If you find yourself like stuck and you don't have any food, you can just look it up on your MyFitnessPal, on your my macros, whatever app you're using and eat out without feeling like you're going off plan or anything like that. Um, you can get very creative in the kitchen. It's fun. You honestly get to enjoy your diet like all the time because you don't have to eat the same things. You don't have to follow a strict plan. Those, Those are the, the three benefits. major pros, I think. I love flexible dieting. If you guys need any flexible dieting recipes, Definitely check out her channel. She okay. is like a freaking Betty Crocker <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> like the For cheap fitness. version. <laughs> the cheap version because they're so lazy. Legit though, works. check her channel out if you guys want a whole bunch of different recipes. <laughs> She's got a ton of recipes, so definitely check her out. As for the pros for meal planning, it's straightforward. There's literally no thinking. You just read what it says. So if it says 100 grams of chicken, 50 grams of brown rice and 110 grams of vegetables, that's it. Like, you just go grab that, weigh it out, and that's it. So it's you really like easy. It. No, you don't think about it at all. You literally just take it out, weigh it, good to go. So that's why a lot of people who are on a meal plan will do like meal prep Sunday and then like put it in containers and like literally like it's all good to go. There's no thinking. So especially when you're in like prep, like you are thinking of literally a million different things. So when you have that like just set structure, it's a lot easier. I also wanna just put a side note there. Although meal plan is very structured as to what your food choices are, some coaches do give a swap list, mine does. So I can swap for different um, proteins or carb sources or fat sources if I want to. However, the closer we get to a show, it's definitely something that I try not to do. But in the off season, I can definitely swap things out. Another pro is that you are very, very consistent when it comes to meal plans. Your um, macronutrients and micronutrients don't really change because you're literally having the same food every single day. So your body responds a little bit better and if you really need to make a tweak, like you know kind of where you have to just because mm -hmm. you know the consistency is there. So that's another pro. And then that's gonna bring me to the first con of 
flexible dieting just because even though you do have a lot of flexibility if you are on a competition prep and you're constantly changing your foods and having different foods and just trying to get creative with it you can lose the consistency because sometimes tracking apps actually aren't that accurate with the macros that they provide you with so the numbers can be off and if you're switching things out constantly and just trying different things you might be having more calories you might not be having enough calories so it can get very inconsistent very fast unless you're sticking to the same foods every single day which would basically just be a meal plan and then another thing with flexible dieting as well is a lot of people actually don't have the willpower to just have one thing so they'll have one serving of chocolate and the next thing you know that serving leads to the other serving and the next serving so <laughs> so that's why not everyone can follow a flexible dieting plan another thing is just like the overwhelming feeling of having to figure out your macros every single day and like why you're gonna be eating every single day if you don't want to um, follow up meal plan with the macros that you're provided with so there's definitely pros there's definitely cons so that's why it just comes down to how you feel with it and what you feel best with and that's kind of the issue that I had when I try flexible dieting is that some days like something last minute will come up and I have nothing prepped and I'm like, oh my god, I have all these macros today and I don't know what to do. So that becomes a little bit overwhelming. But like she mentioned previously with the pros, like you can easily go to like a Tim Hortons or a Wendy's or whatever and find something on their menu that's kind of macro friendly that would fit your macros for that day. So I mean, you know, that's a, that's a pro and con right there. Like I have the anxiety of like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm gonna eat. But I have that flexibility to go get something somewhere else and just search it up on my fitness pal. As for the cons for meal plan, obviously it's mostly what she said for pros. You don't have that much flexibility. Like I said, some coaches provide a swap list, some don't. And if you don't, unfortunately, like that's when you come become very restrictive. And some people, you know, depending on how serious you are with like getting ready for a show or something like that, that doesn't phase you. But for someone who's new to competing or anything like that, that can actually start leading to binge eating. I've been a victim of binge eating. I've been through down that road. It can lead to food fears where you're afraid of, to eat something because it's technically bad. It can also lead to just a bad relationship with food. So that's something definitely you learn in time. As someone who's always on a meal plan, it has taken me time to really look at food a different way. That's something that I'll definitely get into me someday down the future in a separate video, but I think I could elaborate on that by a lot. Mm -hmm. Another con would be that when you're out, and although you can order something like clean and stuff like that, you get kind of worried. You kind of panic that like, oh my God, like maybe this isn't exactly what it's supposed to be on the meal plan. Like, I don't know if this is gonna be good. I don't know if I'm gonna gain weight. Like you you kind of freak out a little bit. It's the same thing with flexible dieting too though. Mm -hmm. I think it just comes down to just being on like a strict plan at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's and like a con for flexible dieting too, for sure. Yeah, so there's something that's a con for both is that, well, just in general when you're yeah. dieting, I mean, it's hard to go out and just rely on nutrition facts based on a website or whatever it is. That's when your mentality kicks in and you realize that it's just not that serious. Yeah. That actually leads us to the next question. How do we deal with eating out when we are following a meal plan and when we're following a flexible dieting approach? You wanna go ahead? So, I just wanna um, eat. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just wanna eat. <laughs> so eating out when you're on a meal plan, I mean, it's doable but it's definitely not ideal. Just because you're eyeballing your portions, like I just previously said, like you're not sure if it's really on point with what your meal plan is outlining. But I have done it in the past, I've, it's been fine. And my coach approves it, so it's totally okay to do. Basically what I do is I just order a salad, get all the dressings on the side and probably get like chicken or um, sometimes I'll get sashimi if they have like raw fish there. Sometimes, because I'm on like a higher fat diet, I'll do like steak, but you need to make sure they don't cook it in oil, they don't cook it with butter or anything like that, so you literally have to ask for it plain. So it's a little bit of a hassle to eat out just because the server's probably like, really? But it's definitely doable and that's usually what I do is usually go for like a salad or something like that or like, like I said, like a steak and then like their vegetables of the day or something. Again, it would really depend on how flexible your meal plan swap page is. What your goals are. Yeah, what your goals are. So I mean, like if I were not getting ready for a show, I'd definitely be a lot more like lenient and, you know, be a little more spontaneous, I guess you could say. Whereas if you're like three weeks out this year, oh, yeah. three weeks out from getting your pro card. Yeah, if you're three weeks out, I would probably bring my food with <laughs> me, to be honest with you. Yeah. So eating out, 
is doable, but it's definitely depending on you know how close you are to a show or how serious your, your goals goal is, are. Yeah. yeah, it's something that you want to try not to do unless it's like absolutely necessary. So that's kind of how I eat out when I'm on a meal plan. With flexible dieting, I'm a lot more lenient when I'm in my off season. During prep, I do try to avoid it as much as I can just because even if you can eyeball it, you never know exactly how they're cooking it. Like no matter what you say, yeah, like, you can't trust. Yeah, restaurants love to use butter. They love to they love to use oil, so it's very hard. Um, here and there, it's fine. Like if it's a special occasion, if it's Valentine's Day or birthday or something like that. Some sort of celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like make the sacrifice. It's not gonna kill you. Like going over on calories in one day isn't gonna kill you. Mm -hmm. You can always like balance it out on the following day. And I can talk about that in another video just because I feel like I wanna rant about it. But if I'm on prep, like you can always actually look up the nutrition for the restaurant. Most most restaurants do provide you with their nutrition facts. Even if they don't, you can just find some something generic and log that into your MyFitnessPal. It's not going to be the most consistent thing, which is why I say that you should try to avoid it. But that all depends on how serious your goals are. If you're just if you have lifestyle goals and you're just trying to get like lean for yourself and you just want to look good for yourself, enjoy life. Like one meal out isn't going to kill you, especially if you're still logging it and you're overestimating what you're having. That's like the best way to do it. Is just eyeball what you're having. I would overestimate a little bit just because like I said, restaurants love to cook and anything and everything that's calorie dense. Just do your best, like don't overthink it. One hundred or two extra hundred, hundred calories isn't gonna kill you. It's not gonna make you fat. So it's really not that big of a deal, but at the end of the day, it definitely just like depends on how important your goals are, just like just like with the meal yeah, plan. I think that's the main thing. It depends on how important your goals are. Yeah, and like how much time you have to get ready, what you're getting ready for, and just having priorities. Yeah. yeah. Finally, the last point that we're covering in this video is what is best for fat loss and muscle gaining. That is probably the number one question that most people are probably wondering. They just don't know which one to choose. And the answer for that would be... What do you think, Gabby? Either one. What works best for you? Yeah, honestly, like... It what just, you feel best with? Yeah. Because if you feel good with the diet that you're following, you're gonna be successful. If yeah. you enjoy what you're doing every single day, there's gonna be no reason for you to go off plan. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Find out what works best for you, play around with both styles, try them both, and just go with whatever made you, you know, whatever you kind of stuck with the most. I mean, obviously, in general dieting, it's not gonna be 100% enjoyable, yeah. unless you're like a freak and you have an awesome metabolism, uh -huh. but even when you have to get to a certain body fat, even if you're eating a lot of calories and you have an awesome metabolism, it's still gonna feel like low calories just because you're not used to eating in a deficit. Yeah. It's not human, it's not normal, that's why you shouldn't do it for longer than like 12 to 20 weeks. Like Sometimes legit. 20 yeah, weeks is my max. I think we covered mostly everything. If you guys have any other questions that we didn't answer in this video, definitely leave them down in the comments down below. Valentina will make sure to check my comments, I'll make sure to check her comments to see what questions you guys might have. I hope this video was very helpful. And if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Um, share it with anybody who might benefit from it. I feel like this is a topic that not many people kind of talk about. So if you know someone that might benefit from this video, definitely give this a share. At the end of the day, meal plan, flexible dieting, it's all the same. We're putting calories into our body. Everything is a macronutrient. Everything is a micronutrient. It's all the same. It's just a different approach. So keep that in mind. And if you guys aren't subscribed already, be sure to do that as well, as I'll be having new content coming up very, very soon, including this 10, 15K challenge that we're both doing. And again, I appreciate you guys tuning into my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm sure you guys will see her again. See <laughs> Bye! Y